Hey, it's Serge, and today I'm going to be showing you guys five ways to fill your sketchbook and make it more aesthetic. I just want to preface this by saying that your sketchbook is a place for your own self-expression, so please don't feel forced to make it look pretty or aesthetic just because you see other people online do it. There is no wrong way to fill your sketchbook and just do whatever you find fun. Anyways, with that out of the way, timestamps will be in the description and let's get started. To start, the first way that I make my sketchbooks more aesthetic is through the use of color schemes. For example, in this spread, I mainly use pink and light blue and some beige. Color schemes are a combination of colors that can be used to convey different moods, emotions, or simply just because they look good together. I personally have a few color schemes that I use really often, which are on the screen right now, but some other ideas are using complementary colors, primary slash secondary colors, or a monotone color scheme. Complementary colors are colors that are opposite to each other on the color wheel, that, so they make each other pop out. For example, blue and orange are complementary colors, and so are red and green, and yellow and purple. Primary colors, on the other hand, are red, blue, and yellow, which are colors that you can mix together to get the secondary colors, and secondary colors are purple, orange, and green. While you don't have to use the exact colors, sometimes I like using pastel versions of them because they fit better for my art style. For example, when I do use like the primary color scheme, uh, I sometimes use pink instead of red, which is kind of like a pastel version. Anyways, finally, a monotone color scheme is a color scheme with only one color. Strange, right? What I mean is that while you do only have one color, let's say blue for example, you can use many values of that same color, like a dark blue, a light blue, etc. So it does end up creating a lot of contrast in the end, and your spread still does look very put together because it's all the same color, but it also does create a lot of contrast, which obviously creates more visual interests. The colors you choose can also indicate different moods since different colors often have like a double meaning to them. For example, blue can indicate a sadness or like maybe a calm environment while red can symbolize love and excitement. I use this color theory stuff more in digital art just because I do my actual finished illustrations on Procreate, but in my sketchbook I just pick colors that I think look good together and create doodles with them. I also usually pick matching highlighter shades to fill in the background area and pull the color schemes together so it's not just like white paper and then like a bunch of color. I also sometimes use color schemes to pick the characters that I draw since 50% of my sketchbook is just fan art from like shows, animes, video games, mangas, yeah. So I usually pick one character that I really want to draw and try to find others with a similar color scheme or contrasting color schemes depending on what you think will look better. And yeah, I also recommend like writing down your favorite color schemes that you use often or like making a little bookmark in your sketchbook or something just so you can always go back and remember the colors that you use and use them again for future spreads. Moving on to the second way I make my sketchbooks more aesthetic is through composition. Composition is basically the way that you arrange things on an illustration, or in this case, a sketchbook spread. There are so many ways that you can go about this by the way, but for me, a rule of thumb is to make sure that there isn't too much negative space over positive space. By that, I mean that making sure that most of the page is either filled with drawings or color, but obviously there shouldn't be like too much empty white space or else it will look kind of boring in my opinion. Obviously, this depends completely on your art style and what your preferences are. Like you might like more of a minimalist look, so you will leave like more of the sketchbook white than I do, but I really like my sketchbooks have like an organized yet messy feel to them, so I like making them a bit more overcrowded just enough to get that point across. If you are really into playing things out, you can definitely go on Procreate or Ibis Paint or any other digital drawing app that you have, even the Photos app, and just plan out where you're going to put your drawings in your spread before you actually draw it. And if you often use references from Pinterest like me, make sure to download those photos and just put them into your canvas and like figure out what the formatting should look like, just so that you get like that good amount of negative to positive space ratio. Or if you're lazy like me and don't want to go through the hassle of pulling out your iPad and doing all that, you can just make a little thumbnail page. I usually do it in the back of like a marker bleed through page so you're not wasting paper and you can just plan out your drawings with a little thumbnail drawing. And I really like doing that because first off, it fills up my sketchbook even more and also I just take up any more blank space that I have by doing the thumbnail drawings. If you do have like some awkward blank space, here are some ideas for what you can add. A, you can add a title, or this title can be like a character name or the name of a, the spread based on like a theme or something. For example, if you're doing like a galaxy theme, I think that'd be pretty cool to write like stars or a galaxy or something like that. I love making the titles like super bold and I usually do like calligraphy or a bubbletto font just because it fits my style a lot. B, you can also add in stickers, washi tape, or my personal favorite is color circles. Basically, after I'm done with the spread, I use the markers that I use most in the spread. For example, maybe it's like blue and pink for this one, and maybe like three to six colors usually. But for this one, since it's just like two colors, I'll usually just pick those two colors. And I'll make a little circle at the bottom of the page, and I'll fill in each circle with like a different color. So in case I come back to it later, I know which colors I use, and it also fills up negative space. So win-win. The third thing I recommend doing is to add in different materials or 3D items into your sketchbook. 
While sketching on a plain flat surface is really cool, I think adding in like 3D items or textures can just really elevate the look of your sketchbook so much too. One of my favorite ways to do this is through sticky notes. I think so many artists use them just because they're so practical and cheap and they look cute, but they're definitely my favorite thing just to put into my sketchbook, so here are some ways you can use them. A, you can use them just for color blocking, like if your spread has too much negative space like I was mentioning before, boom, you can just add a sticky note over it and cover that space up, and yeah, you have more color in your spread and it doesn't look too empty. B, you can also add in sticky notes if it fits the color scheme. Personally, I have blue, pink, and purple sticky notes since those are the colors that I use the most in my sketchbook and they also match with all the color schemes that I often use, so I do recommend purchasing the colors of sticky notes that you use most often in your sketchbook since you'll be more likely to use them. So you can add in the sticky notes for that, or C, you can use them to cover up something else and hide it from the world. This is my favorite method, especially when I'm doing pen doodles like I am right now and you can't erase anything. If something goes wrong or you mess up or a line that's like, it's too big to be able to white out, you can just use a sticky note over it and basically get a fresh canvas, which is kind of like an undo button, but in real life. Over the sticky notes, you can obviously feel free to add in any drawings that you want or just leave it blank or maybe even add in words or anything that you want. I also recently got these clear sticky notes from Stationery Pal and I really want to use them like for layering purposes or something because I think it'd be cool for you to be able to still see the drawing underneath. Also add in things to the top without touching the actual art that you made which I think is like a really cool addition. It's kind of like adding in another layer for your digital art but then you can obviously go back and erase it or delete it or whatever. So yeah. You can also add in scrapbook paper because I think that's super cute touch and often I just add in random clothing or shopping tag just because they look nice and they also fit in a lot of the space that I have so if you're an avid hoarder like me, this hack is great for you. The fourth way to make your sketchbook more aesthetic is to write in song lyrics and annotations. I love 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 writing in song lyrics into my sketchbook for multiple reasons. First off, this ties back to the whole negative positive space thing I was mentioning for number two, where if there's awkward space and there just isn't enough room to fit in a sticker or write a title even but the space is still empty, just add in song lyrics guys. You can write them in from any direction going up and down or side to side, it will literally look good either way. I also usually listen to music while I draw, so I tend to pick lyrics from the song that I'm listening to at that moment, but sometimes if my spread has like a theme going on or whatever, I like to pick lyrics according to that. I also think it's really cool that once you're done with the sketchbook and you see it like years later or maybe right after you finish it even, you can kind of see the music that you were listening to at the time of drawing it and it kind of just takes you through a trip of memory lane and I don't know, I just think that it's like super cute and nostalgic. You can also write in annotations or notes and I do this in multiple ways. First, you can just write in your opinion about the drawing or spread that you made, like what you like about it, what you dislike about it, what you think you messed up on, whether or not you like it at all, and why did you feel the need to draw it. If you draw fan art, you can also write a little review about the thing you're doing fan art for. This is really fun when you're doing a character especially, so you can like write about what you like or dislike about the character, you can write about their traits and like a scene that they're in in like the show that you're watching, and I find it really fun. Something I like to do is jot down notes about my OC story. If you don't know, I'm creating a universe for my original characters called Shard, and inspiration strikes at the most random times. So whenever I'm drawing, I'm usually doing it by autopilot, and sometimes I just let my mind wander, and I come up with some pretty cool stuff that I really need to write down, so what better way to do that than to take up more space in your sketchbook and just write it down on a sticky note or just randomly on your page. Anyways, I think overall annotating and writing in song lyrics are a great way to spice up your sketchbook, especially after you play around with your handwriting fonts, and if you write them in like a straight line or a wavy line or etc, they can just really spice up your sketchbook. The fifth and final way I make my sketchbook more aesthetic is through using multiple mediums. By this, I mean using just more than one medium, aka art supply, per page, or a spread in this case. Now, this is definitely more focused on spreads rather than finished illustrations. Like, if I'm doing a big final drawing that I just want to use markers for, then I will just use markers for that drawing. But for like random sketchbook spreads or things where I'm just doodling, I think it does add a lot of visual interest to use multiple art supplies instead of just one, and making sure that they're all definitely visible elements of the page. Most of the time, I start off my sketchbook spreads by doing pencil sketches, and I just leave them as is in case I ruin them sometimes. But other times, I do go over with other pencil sketches using like colored pencils, markers, etc. And you can also do like anything basically anything that involves color and this can also really help add texture for example let's say that you use oil pastels or crayons or colored pencils for example with that you can add it the 3d element that i was mentioning before again and i just think that makes your sketchbook look really cool especially when you can like see the texture marks and i think another great way to do this is also with like using stencils or something because i find them really cool and again it helps fill up the blank space a lot so yeah 
Anyways, that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope this also gives you some ideas on what to do with your sketchbook. As always, thank you so much for watching till the end. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!